How's it going? This is Jason with Wake Makers. Today I'm gonna to run you through the basics of props for inboard boats, so let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna cover when it comes to props is covering the physical properties of a prop. Start off with, let's talk about diameter. Pretty straightforward, uh, it's basically just the overall width of the prop on a four blade, really easy on a three blade. You go from the center of the prop out to the tip of the blade, double it, that's your diameter. The diameter is important for a couple of reasons. Generally, uh, for our applications, for water sports boats, towed water sports, nowadays we're trying to optimize the performance of the boat for slower speed activities. So generally we're going to run the largest diameter prop that we can safely fit on the boat. The reason why we want a larger diameter for water sports activities, for slower speed activities, boats are heavily weighted for surfing, for wakeboarding, for example, is the larger the diameter, all things being equal, the bigger the blades of the prop are gonna be, the more surface area we're gonna have in the blades of the prop. So that's gonna mean we get more efficient transfer of power from the engine to the water. It's not gonna slip as much. And we're also gonna be moving more water with that larger diameter prop. So a bigger prop generally give you better slow speed handling. You're putting more water over the rudder so you get more control from the steering system. Um, and it's gonna help accelerate a, a heavier boat, boat that has more mass in it, more effectively and more efficiently. So that's the diameter. Next thing up that we're gonna talk about is the pitch. This is always a tough one. Pitch is a numerical representation for how far forward the prop will travel through the water when it completes one revolution. Um, and that's in an ideal world with no slippage. So if we have a prop like this one, which has a 16 inch pitch on it, that means that every revolution that this propeller makes, it's gonna move forward 16 inches. So the higher the number numerically when it comes to pitch, the further the prop's gonna move through the water, um, and therefore you're gonna get a faster speed. Whereas the lower the pitch, the uh, speed's gonna decrease, and you're gonna get effectively more torque multiplication. So generally, for a, a heavier boat for, for wakeboarding or for, for wake surfing, you're gonna see a lower pitch number. For water skiing, for barefooting, for higher speed activities, you're gonna see a higher pitch number. The final dimension that we talk about when it comes to the performance of the prop is the cup. And that's the amount of, of curvature that exists in the blade uh, right at the very end. Cup numbers for our applications for these props are very small. This prop, for example, has 105 thousandths of an inch of cup, so it's a very small number. Um, cup can be used to impact the performance of the prop, but it's pretty minor, so it's usually the last thing that we look at. For most applications for our boats, the difference that you see going through the different prop op the cup options that are offered is maybe one mile an hour on the top speed. Um, so it's usually not something that we pay real close attention to, uh, but it, it can come into play, especially if you're doing like an A-B comparison between two, two different prop options. Material selection when it comes to props used to play a much bigger role. Uh, a while ago, late 90s, stainless props were pretty common because uh, a little bit stiffer, blades transfer power to the to the water better nowadays though pretty much every prop is going to be that you want to put on your boat is going to be made out of uh, the same the same material as these props this is an alloy of nickel bronze and aluminum called nibral um, and it has really the best physical properties both from a machinability perspective being able to actually make the prop uh, somewhat economically and efficiently, and also from a performance perspective. So a lot of people say, hey, I have a brass prop or a bronze prop, it's not. Um, it's actually a little, quite a bit more advanced than that because it's an alloy to get the correct properties, but it does have that same kind of gold characteristic color to it. So uh, Nibrol is the, is the alloy that's used. And um, the other nice thing about uh, uh, a, a Nibrol prop is that it serves as a sacrificial component in the drivetrain. So if you do hit something with a, a nibble prop compared to a stainless prop, uh, this is gonna take, absorb the force and take the hit. It's a bummer, you're out of prop, but it's gonna prevent you from typically bending a shaft or even having damage further up the drivetrain into the transmission output bearing or something like that. So, um, so that's the, the material that props are made out of nowadays and why, why we care about it. Finally, physical properties of, of, of the prop that we're gonna look at doesn't impact performance, but we're gonna talk about the hub and the shaft size that it's designed for. So this is important um, when it comes to making sure that the prop actually fits on your boat. 
Um, you need to make sure that the hub is set up for the same type of shaft that you have on your boat, either a tapered shaft uh, on most boats or a spline shaft on a Mastercraft model built after 2003. And so this is just a, a measurement that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, certainly our prop finder guy will do that for you, but it's either gonna be a one inch shaft, a one one eighth inch shaft, an inch and a quarter shaft, or a spline shaft, and that just refers to the diameter of the shaft that the prop is designed to fit onto. Um, this is a tapered bore for all of those shafts except for the spline option. So the size of the bore here is actually smaller than it is on the back because the prop shaft is tapered and the prop is designed to slide up onto that taper and actually be driven onto the taper by the boat traveling through the water, which is what's gonna hold it in place ultimately. And the final characteristic is the rotation of the prop whether it's a left-hand rotation or a right-hand rotation. And that's just a function of the boat that you have. Um, most boats nowadays, nearly every boat now, when this video is being shot in 2019, has a left-hand rotating prop. Uh, there were a number of nautiques through the late 90s, early 2000s that had right-hand rotation props. Uh, but most boats out there are gonna be a left-hand rotating prop. Hopefully that helps you understand props better. If you have any questions about selecting the correct prop for your application, feel free to contact one of our friendly product experts. You can email us at support at wakemakers.com. Give us a call at 888-338-6085 or leave a comment below the video and we will get back to you. If you like this video, make sure you like it and subscribe for more content. We got more videos coming soon.